Hello and welcome back to the Learn to Build Mobile Apps with Ionic Framework, React.js, and Capacitor. This is part four. We're going to start um, creating some input forms. So the first thing we're going to do is here on the login screen, um, we're going to use the Ionic components to do the uh, input. We are going to do the, we need the username and password, uh, but to use the appropriate uh, terms here, we need the email address and password. Um, this video, first of all, please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. But uh, this video is going to cover just the forms. And then the next video, uh, part five, we're going to integrate the uh, Firebase into the authenticating co uh, authentication context that we have already created. Um, if this is something that's basic to you, skip ahead to the fifth one. But if you've never put together a UI, uh, this might be interesting for you to stick around and watch. We are going to use um, state to manage the input. And we're also going to use state to manage hiding and showing and loading screen. And also, once again, use state to um, show errors when they appear. So we'll get to use the ion loading and the ion toast along with the ion input here in this video. Um, so what we've done so far is we've created two state variables for the email address and one for the password. We are now going to connect them to the ion input. You can see the way you connect them is you listen for the ion change event. And then on the ion change event, you get the detail object and the value from the detail object, which should be the string that you want to set to the value. So that was pretty quick. We set up the email. We set up the password. Um, you can see the forms appear. Let's just uh, make sure we set the proper types and set the appropriate uh, placeholder value. Um, we still have email in there. Let's fix that label get that label set to password, which is what we're really looking for here. Um, so now you see we have it uh, eh, we have it capturing the input. Um, so what's next? Um, start to add a loading screen. As I said before, we'll create a state variable to keep track of loading or not loading. And um, then we're going to use the ion loading uh, component to show you um, loading when we are attempting to authenticate a user. So here we go. Um, I like to cut and paste when I can. I'm not the best typer, but I get it done. So we're going to initially set the uh, state to false uh, for um, show loading. And then we have the set show loading. Now we will go to the top of the content area um, in the render method, and that's where we're going to stick the the actual component. But what we want to do is when you click uh, do login, we want to set loading to true. And then when we get the result back from login, we're going to set loading to false, which I did not do at that point because I'm doing a voiceover now and I notice I left it as true. So we'll catch that error later. All right, let's add the actual item to the content area. Um, I just cut and paste some code here. The I am loading component, it looks for a message, it looks for a uh, is open value, and then on did dismiss. And what we're doing here is on did dismiss, if we actually have a user object, then we're going to transition to the next page. So that's kind of why you see that uh, that code on the end of the on did, di on did dismiss. Um, and the uh, auth values will be set to um, the user object that's gotten and not null. And that's how we'll know that we have been able to successfully log in. Um, we have a couple of things with the squiggly lines, but um, they're going to stick around for a little while until we actually um, set them and pass them into our login function, which you see what we've done right now. We still have the dummy login function. We haven't integrated Firebase yet, but it should be enough for us to um, basically show that we have the UI actually capturing the appropriate values. I got a dangling... Um, parentheses with something there. We can, let's clean that up and we get our UI straight, which is exactly what we were looking for at this point. Um, so we see we have our loading screen showing up. And this is where I actually will get to correct the where I had it left it set to true. We're going to set it to false. So when we get when we return from our login, it should uh, go away appropriately. So that appears to be working the way we wanted it to work now. Um, so we have an example of how to create a nice login screen with a loading uh, indicator and what are we going to do next here um, excuse me let's move on over to and let's create our create account screen now 
So we're going to copy a bunch of the code we've already created for login because all we're going to do is add a display name value. So that'll just be another text input field. Um, like I said before, no shame in copying code. We know it works once. So let's copy it over to get this going um, a second time quickly. So let's uh, restart by renaming the component to create account page. Um, let's rename the button. So we're going to rename our button to create account. And on this one, we want to add another button to go back. So the idea is that on the login page, you click create account and it will transition you to the create account page. But then on the create account page, if you don't want to actually create the account, you're going to cancel and go back. So what we'll do is we'll use the use history hook and we'll take the history value and we'll use the function on the history value called go back to send us back to the previous uh, route on the stack, which should be the login page. So now that we have that in place, I've checked, yes, we do have, oh, we need to rename. So on the previous page, we used the login function from the authentication context. Now we need to use the create account function, which I don't think exists yet. So we're going to have to go and create that also. And then we're going to create another um, local state variable in our functional component called display name, and then set the accompanying function that you need called set display name. And we don't need a login function anymore. We actually now need a do create account function. So let's rename our function appropriately. Um, it will still be an asynchronous function. We are going to do the same thing we did on the other page. We're going to set the loading when we start the function to true. We're going to clear it and set it to false when we're done. Um, let's copy over the additional display name input. Follow the exact same pattern as before. Um, you call the set function that's associated with the state variable. You use the event detail that value to get the extra value on the ion change event, and you set the value. It's a lot cleaner. I still see people using refs with ionic stuff. I mean, it doesn't make sense to do it. Let's just keep it real simple. I like to kind of be very consistent in the pattern. If you watch my videos, you'll see that I'm just doing a lot of the same things over and over and over again. Um, it just keeps it easy and keeps it simple. Okay, so now let's, we're back in the login page. Let's add the button to transition to the create account when the create account is pressed. So we'll just create another, we don't actually, we don't even need to create a function. We can just actually use the um, history and we can push the new page onto the stack here. And so that's what we're gonna do. And obviously we're gonna need to get over to our app TSX to add the new route. So let's do that now. We're going to remember we split our routes so that we have a set of routes that are called our authenticated and set where we're not. The create account is going to be called when we're not authenticated. So we're just going to add in that same section right underneath the login route. Let's import the create account page. And um, we've set our route. Now uh, we need to properly assign. So we don't want to load the login page. We want to make sure that we load the create account page when that path is selected. Okay, so now we are navigating back and forth between the paths, which is what we we're striving for. Oh, let's clean up the title. So the page is properly set, all right? We got create account set. Now let's add the um, error. We're gonna put a toast on the bottom so that when we get an error that appears, we'll get the little pop-up that slides in the bottom. It will show the error message that gets returned from either login or create account. And we will uh, go from there. So once again, another ionic component. Once again, pretty awesome. A lot of the components you get out of the box. We take the ion toast. I believe the ion toast has a another cool thing. The TypeScript is going to pop up and show me exactly what I need. So I believe we need, we're going to need a message. We're going to need a duration. Clearly, we need this kind of is open flag, which we're going to the same way we have a show errors and a set. Uh, same way we have a show loading and a set show loading. We're going to create a show errors and a set show errors. Uh, to manage the state and the errors will get returned from the where are we now we're in create account the error will get returned from the create account function um, we're following the exact same pattern for the login function but you'll see more of that code in the next video where we integ actually integrate facebook so here we have the is open we have the message we have on did excuse me on did dismiss and we're setting the color to danger which will give us a nice red color um, to display if an actual error is present um, when we're done executing our function. So we are we are properly navigating back and forth uh, to the pages. Let's uh, copy this toast and put this code over in my login page also. Um, let's get it set up. 
import the uh, files that we need. Let's copy the state variables over from the create account page over to the login page. Um, if I was really going to dig in deep and do some refactoring, I would ex I would kind of take the whole input section out and put it into a separate component since it's very similar except for one file. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's just let's just duplicate it. Sometimes seeing things more than once makes it clearer. All right. Um, for now, just to make sure that we're actually getting the input that we want, we're going to just use a simple alert, which will take the values from the uh, input form. And when the user clicks create account, we'll just run the alert to make sure that everything's uh, working properly. We just type this out and we'll see what we get. All right. So we get the information appearing. Let me make sure I put a display value in for display name. So we can get the display name showing. All right. So we know my form is working properly. I can navigate back and forth between the pages properly. Um, and I, th I think that's uh, that we've shown a lot so far. What are we doing here? Uh, oh, yeah, we got to put the show loading in. So we want to make sure that uh, when you start the well, when you start the account creation process, you get the show loading. Um, why isn't it showing? Let me let me just hard code a variable in here to make sure that we can uh, verify that it's working. So let's just set, do I really need a debugger in there? Let's see. So yeah, you know, the debugger will stop it so we can actually see that the loading is showing. Why isn't my, why isn't it showing? Let's see. <laughs> so loading, shit, so loading true. I think this, we, oh, we just didn't have enough time. It was hiding and showing so quickly. So we're just going to leave it set to true so that we can see it's actually working. And I think that should be enough. All right, now we know it's working. Let's wrap this up. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.